Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone here to, uh, to our club level. I'd also like to web welcome everyone watching on our webcast on our website uh, as we have a press conference today to welcome our new head football coach, Everett Weathers. At this time, I'm going to give a format for the press conference. We'll, be, we'll have Dr. Trout, uh, Denise Trout, the university president, Dr. Larry Tice, our director of athletics, introduce Coach Withers. Then after Coach Withers makes a few remarks, media will open it up to questions for you. We would ask that you raise your hands and we will have a handheld mic where you, you can ask your question and be heard clearly. Uh, and then at following the question and answer session, we will open it up to some one-on-ones over here to our right. Dr. Trout. Thank you. Right. Thank you. I am so happy to be here today to share this exciting and important appointment with you. Um, we have so many good friends who are here. I can't begin to name you all and, and thank you. Um, I do want to, though, point out that the president of the student government is here, Lauren Stotler, and um, she represents 38,000 students, every single one of whom was behind us when we made that important decision to move to FBS uh, several years ago. And our, our students have been great supporters and we're, we're just really so grateful. So Lauren, thank you for being here. Um, we did a robust national search beginning the very night, December 21st, when Coach Fran told us uh, that he was going to retire after seven seasons with Texas State University. Uh, and I want to take this opportunity to thank our athletic director, Dr. Larry Tice, the senior staff um, of the athletics department who combed through so many resumes, who basically spent uh, their holiday vacation working on this search, but what a great outcome. I also want to thank the members of the search committee, our provost, Jean Bourgeois, the faculty athletic uh, representative, Paul Gowans, vice president for student affairs, Joanne Smith, and our special assistant to the president, uh, Vicki Britton, for all the work that you did on this search committee. And I also want to thank our governing board, the Board of Regents, the chancellor of our system, and our system staff. Um, they really worked hard to support us uh, during a holiday um, on what is a very, for them, a very quick turnaround. So we're, we're very grateful for their support and I know some of them are with us today uh, via the live stream. We knew that when we went down this road in this search, we were looking for a man, for a coach who had championship experience, who was an excellent recruiter, who had a commitment to team core values, who had a passion for coaching, and who understood the student part of student athletes. And we got it all. So now I'm very pleased. I'm pleased to turn this microphone over to Larry Tice, who's going to formally introduce our new coach. Larry? Thank you, Dr. Trouth. Uh, the last member of our search committee is that young man standing right there. I told him that's what all of our athletes look like, right there. So uh, I tell you, it, it, it was it was a, it was a long process, and and we literally scoured the nation looking um, for the right fit at the right time. And there were a lot of candidates, a lot of interest in this job a lot of interest and it's uh, I mean it, it it's I think you will see uh, the first 10 seconds he stands up here why why he's standing here today but uh, you know we you, yesterday and, and you know this is a, it's an exciting day for us but as people around me know and, and people that work in athletics know we're more about what you know more than just about what happens out there on the field and and yesterday, you know, we lost a, a football player here uh, that passed away at home in Buda. And I tell you, that just 
comes crashing down on you in the afternoon. But it was tough. And he's from Buda and his parents. You know, we want to send our prayers out to them. And but Will, we're thinking about you, and and uh, I'm sure this year the kids are rallying around him. But it's it's a tough deal. It's really tough. So, but uh, <clears throat> right after that, we got to sign his contract and. As I told Dr. Trout, the highs, the lows, it all you know comes in waves in this business, and you just got to suck it up, and move on. So, but you know we're going to move forward. We're all going to stick together, and I know the football kids. This is a time of year that you actually wish they were here and not scattered all over the state, so they could all be with us and we could have them out there. But we have counselors and everything set up for them, and I know a bunch of the players are coming back, so we can meet with them and and make sure they're okay but uh we're, we'll get through this and bobcat nation needs to stick together and i'm so glad we've got him now that's going to meet with the team and move forward and get us going and i appreciate all the assistant coaches football assistant coaches a lot of them are in this room right now i think every one of them they've stuck around they've helped us they're keeping moving forward they don't want to lose this recruiting class um and i the, so the assistant coaches i see a bunch of y'all in there I, I really appreciate you guys being here now and, and, and sticking around with us uh, through the holidays and helping us out. So uh, we will go forward. People always ask you, why use a search committee? Well, who saw this coming? And that's why you use a search committee. As Joe Vazelli sent me last night, you got me. He was on nobody's radar, nobody's list except for a bunch of people in this business nationally uh, that know what a good football coach is and what a good person is and he he's infectious he's contagious i've never interviewed a football coach that talks about right a few seconds away from being in the super bowl a few seconds away from being in the national championship um he just won a conference championship last year you know, a lot. He didn't get some breaks down the road to be a head coach, and as the D coordinator of Ohio State, and he he cut his salary in half and left Ohio State to go to James Madison to get the opportunity to coach, be a head coach, and that right there just blew me away. Is he wanted it? I mean, he wanted it. And in this business, the hours you put in and and the work you do, and if you don't want it. And you're coming here for other reasons. The minute things go bad, it goes south on you fast. And this guy, I mean, the night before the interview, we were in the hotel, and I knew he was in the hotel somewhere, but I couldn't talk to him. And so, but I just called to check on him and said, "You okay?" And all he said is, "I want your job." And that was it. And I, okay. <laughs> well, that's easy. But he, uh, he was. It was destiny from the start. And. Um, you know, it, the search committee and everybody, and I want to thank Daniel and Parker Search. Uh, Dr. Trout caught me off guard a little bit. This is the first time, I think, that we've all sat in the room, and after talking about all the candidates and visiting with candidates, usually what happens is the group says, okay, you know, here, we, they don't rank anybody, they just, okay, here, here's who's acceptable, and then they they leave and leave me there with the search firm and we start hammering out details and we start thinking and you need honestly three to four people that are acceptable and then you take off and start going from there but for the first time ever she said we're going to rank a few of these people and then we're going to go on back and leave you there well everybody around the room had him first and it got to me and i'm like well to, I mean, what am I supposed to say? I know who we're going to work with, but we we did, you know, work on some things. And and I said to the group, I said, all right, somebody's going to say we went to the FCS, didn't do this, didn't do that. And I and I told the group earlier, I said, it is not about money because no, we never talked money to anybody before the interviews. That was not an issue. We said if we like them, we'll find it. We will get who we want to get. And with him, and I, I've always, people know me I, that in this business and around the country, I don't like the label that, oh, if you're FCS, you're not that, you're not this. Good people work in FCS because the same people in the staff today 
were in FCS three and a half, four years ago, and they're the same people working today in FBS as they were FCS. So I put his picture up there again, and I took the James Madison part, and then I put Ohio State there, put in the two years again, and I said, okay, what's Bobcat Nation going to say to me if I bring the guy who's been the defensive coordinator the past four years at Ohio State to campus? They go nuts. But then I'm thinking, but he went back, took a 6-6 six and six James Madison team, won nine games. Next, this past year, won nine games. Won the first championship since 08. And I, can't, I couldn't get out of my head watching him on game day. I don't know if y'all saw him on college game day this year, unveiling the college game day went to James Madison, believe it or not. And there, and there he was, wound up like a top. And then you start watching some of his videos, it's contagious. And he, he just, I mean, we just kept working on it. And so, part, so they leave and Daniel says, well, all right, start working on some packages. And so we start working on some things and, and then Daniel goes to work and starts talking to three to four different candidates. What do you need? What do you need? This, that, and the other. And he was just, I want the job. I want the job. I want the job. And I'm like, well, we're going to work on this. And so I left. And coming back home to campus, I got back here about, I don't know, 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock something, I don't know, last night or two nights ago. I can't even remember anymore how long it's been or what's been going on. But I, I'm dry, I leave, and so for the 30-minute drive, I just made one phone call, and that was to him. And we just, I, it, he just the whole time blew me away, this, that, here's what I need to do this. And I actually was happy that he started demanding some things. Because I'm thinking, God, I got, you know, I, yes, it's great to want it, but I need to know what you need. And um, so then I got back to campus, and I called Dr. Trout, and I said, yeah, you know, yeah, we're, we're going to work on this. There's other people out there. The, their search committee is talking to all these other people. Everybody's interested, um, this, that, and the other. But we, I told her at the time, I said, you know, I, I think we're just going to focus and hammer this down. And, and finally, last night, or God, I think it was about 6 o'clock or 6.30, and his agent, you can tell his agent, and thanks, Vicki, because Vicki sat up there. I was in her office all day yesterday, changed the wordage and verbiage, but his agent, Trace Armstrong, played in the NFL for a long time. And, and uh, so he was, he, was a, he was a bulldog. I knew we were dealing with a, a pretty strong agent, and he went in it. That, he did what he was supposed to do, was protect him to make sure – He's going to be a bobcat for a long time. And um, when we finally, you know, sealed that down and got it done, and, and I think we've got him the tools for success. He's got them himself, I can tell you that. But I, I think the facilities are in place. I think everything's in order. Um, a couple phone calls today just sent it over the top for me. And I don't know if he's made it in here yet, but D.W. Rutledge, the uh, president of the Texas High School Coaches Association um, called me this morning and when we actually moved the press conference uh, because of some flight issues he said man I, I've got to go to my granddaughter's basketball game but I'm going to try to get there and I said coach you go to your granddaughter's basketball game I understand but only if you know DW only he can say it in the way of uh, Dr. Tice you got you good one what he said so, <laughs> And then Mac Brown called me this morning, and Mac said it didn't take me but a second. Mac was the head coach at App State. He played for Mac. And Mac said the second I saw him, I made him a team captain. He said he was team captain material from the first time I saw him. And I said, Coach, that, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And he said, I tell you what, also, Tice, he said, don't take this the wrong way either, but for the first time in, in my lifetime, I got coaches from all over the country calling right now wanting to go work at Texas State as his assistant coach. I said, well, that's not a bad thing, coach. <laughs> and so, uh, and, uh, you know, he, and he was actually calling to apologize to me that he couldn't make to the press conference today because he had a flight this afternoon to go to the national championship game to work for ESPN. So, you know, if anybody knows the game, it's two people – the high school coach is the most important people to us in this state. And to have DW say that and say that if he doesn't make it today, he'll be with him tonight or tomorrow to go through some things. And then, you know, Mac to tell 
to tell me that sure meant a lot. But you know, he, his what you look for also is the coaching tree, and I mean Jeff Fisher, Mac Brown, Urban Meyer, uh, Butch Davis. He he's his coaching tree is phenomenal, and everybody speaks highly of him. The people he's worked for, the people that have worked with him, uh, he's he he has been taught well, and. I'm just glad everybody else is so stupid they didn't hire him a long time ago so we could get him and, it, and it's, it's time for him. And he, there was a lot of people we talked to that um, coordinators and things, but I mean, he has, he has, you know, been around in the NFL and I don't know if y'all are aware too that he, he is, actually has three winning seasons as a head coach because several years ago about four weeks before kickoff he was thrown into the fire at North Carolina and he was the head coach for that entire season at North Carolina and they went seven and five and went to a bowl game and lost to Missouri and he only lost uh, some of those games by three or four points so he had a pretty good football team he was able uh, to collect up and take to a bowl game that year. So he's had three winning seasons as a head coach. And all of his assistant coach years are good too. So he just, I mean, he had the overall package. He had everything we were looking for. If you haven't looked at the videos that are out there, you, you need to look at him at six in the morning or 5.45 in the morning, jumping up and down with the players and lifting weights and screaming and running around with them and high-fiving them. And, and uh, you know, he, he He's got it, and I think y'all will all be fired up. He said he's ready to come down here. He wants to be the CEO. He wants to get out and raise money and do marketing and sell tickets and and let his coaches coach. And and you know we need we need him out there and doing it because I think y'all will all be proud. You'll be happy to have him with you. You're going to want to come visit us and, and be around us. But uh, Kara and Pierce and his other daughter's not here. She's actually with the Alabama football team at the national championship game, so she helps out in their department. So I think football's in the family. But I'm just glad they're here. Um, I think Bobcat Nation's going to be proud. It's not going to be easy. Uh, it's not going to be easy. And But if there's anybody that can put it together and make it work, it's him. I can promise you that. So I'm going to shut up and get him up here. Coach, ever come on up here. This is your new Bobcat football coach, everybody. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Guys, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Thank you guys for being here today. Um, again, I want to. Um, say a word of condolence to uh, Will and his, his family. Uh, anytime you lose a, uh, uh, a young adult uh, at an early age, boy, it's got to hurt a family. So uh, again, you guys keep his family in your prayers tonight because that's, that's, I know that's a tough, a tough uh, thing to go through. Um, and uh, I know when you have kids away on, uh, on Christmas breaks and those type of things, it's hard to get that family back together. So I'm looking forward to uh, when the kids get back, we can get them all together and talk about it because I think that's really important that we all, uh, as a Bobcat family, talk about uh, what happens in the in the family. So again, uh, keep his family in your thoughts uh, in your prayers because I think it's really important. Um, thank you, thank you guys for having me. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. Um, Larry, Dr. Trout, thank you guys. Uh, I think Joanne, uh, Dr. Smith's out there. I think uh, Vicky's out there. Uh, Ms. Bratton, I, I'm sure I'm gonna miss somebody. But uh, when I sit in a uh, a room, I better do this first. My beautiful wife, <laughs> Kara, stand up, stand up, please, Kara. Uh, my son Pierce, uh, stand up. So, I think Larry mentioned my daughter is, uh, she's a recruiting assistant uh, at Alabama. Uh, she's a sophomore in public relations and she's a recruiting assistant. So 
Uh, she got to go back. She drove back 11 hours two nights ago to Tuscaloosa, and they flew out today out to Phoenix. So she's out there with the uh, University of Alabama football team. So she's uh, she's having a she's she's living a dream. She she really is. She's living a dream. Uh, again, thank you guys. Uh, it, it's it's been a it's been a long journey for myself. Uh, I think uh, Larry mentioned it. Uh, I've been a lot of different places. I've uh, been coaching for 28 years. Uh, seven years in the NFL, 21 years in college. Um, I've been down the road here in Austin uh, for three years. Uh, I've been up in Ohio for a number of years. I've been at Austin P. State University in Clarksville, Tennessee, uh, for three years. So I've been I've been there and I've been there. Uh, but uh, they all are part of the journey and uh, part of what I think makes me uh, really excited to do this job. And I think you gotta have somebody to be excited to do a job. Um, when I sat in the room with uh, Dr. Trout and, and, and uh, Larry and the committee, uh, I really was looking for some things myself that I wanted in a program. And I wanted uh, a program that uh, had a commitment, a commitment to excellence. And, a, and, a, and people in that room, they had a competitive spirit. And uh, from the first five minutes I was in that room uh, and sitting across from Dr. Trouth, I said, this is it. I mean, she, she gets it. I mean, she absolutely gets it. And I mean, tying in the student athlete experience was the number one thing that she talked about. And I said, yes, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and then the other members of the room, it, it was just a, a very, very, uh, easy conversation because I think we all have like goals. Uh, we all want to see student athletes succeed not only uh, on the field but in the classroom. And, I, and I, I told them a story. I said, one of my biggest goals I dream every night. And one of the reasons I get up in the morning and go really hard at work uh, is I have, a, I have a dream. Larry said it. I've, I've been one game away from the Super Bowl. I lost in an AFC championship game to the Oakland Raiders one year uh, when I was with the Tennessee Titans, one game away from the Super Bowl. And that, that, that you know, I still think about that today. Um, um, I, uh, we were one game away from the national championship in 2012, I guess, at, uh, at Ohio State. We were one game away in year two of, um, of Urban Meyer's uh, uh, regime. We were one game away. And I think about that every day. And, I, and that's what gets me up every day to go to work because I, I want to be that team. You, you guys ever been at a, at a, or watched it on TV, when a team wins a championship, what do they do with the other team? They push them off the field. They bring a podium in the middle. They have guys with red jackets on and yellow jackets on, rope it off, and the winning team gets to get up on that podium and kiss a trophy and, it, and, and be recognized as the champions. And I work every day to get to that. I work every single day to get to that. The next thing I work to is I work every single day to see every one of our football student athletes walk across the stage and do this to a tassel on a stage. And to me, those are, <laughs> those are the two, those are the two stages that I really love to see our student athletes on. Uh, that stage when they turn that tassel, and obviously when they get a chance to uh, to uh, hold that trophy up and kiss it. We actually have trophy kissing practice. <laughs> I'm not I'm not kidding. I mean, we 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 try to teach our kids how to do it right, uh, and uh, I think it's important because you know we're 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 going to get there, and uh, we're going to get there. What's up, like Larry said, so it's it's a uh, it's a journey. Uh, but we got we got to go to work. We got to get there. So I'm excited. Um, a little bit about what what I think I do for for a football program. I, again, Larry talked about being a CEO. Uh, I believe in this. Uh, I believe in energy plus creativity equals production. Okay, energy. If you don't go to work every day with energy, uh, there's no way you can be creative. And if you're not creative then people are passing you by. And I believe in energy plus creativity equals production. So as a football coach, I'm always looking for ideas. I'm always thinking out of the box. Uh, again, Larry mentioned that the videos. Go to the videos. Uh, we do a lot of things that are, that are not like what everybody else does. 
uh, and, and I know there's some players here, and, and uh, we, we will test you and strain you uh, and make you better people. We talk about enhancing and making better all the time. If there's something out there that you do well as a student athlete, we're going to help you enhance that and make it better. And that's our goals, is to enhance you. You're not the perfect product. There is no such thing as I've met competitive excellence. There's no such thing. We're all striving for that every single day. And that's my job as the CEO of Bobcat Football to help our players push for that every single day. And that's in the classroom, and that's on the football field. So those are the things that we're going we're to strive for. Um, talk a little bit about what I think a football program needs. Uh, and, and obviously energy and, and creativity are first. But when you start talking about a foundation of a football program, there, there are really four things I think are really important. Uh, trust, and I told the committee this, my job is to get the football players at Texas State to trust me. And when they trust me, that's a nice one there, I like that. <laughs> uh, it's all right. When they, when they trust me and they trust our assistants and they trust everybody in that building, then they'll rip their chest open and give us their heart and they'll go. And then X and O's don't matter then. They really don't matter. If your football team will open up their chest and give you their heart because they trust you as a coach, that's number one. And I really believe that's important. Alignment. I think everybody in our building has to be aligned. That's from the head coach down to the equipment manager. That's everybody in the building has got to be on the same page. I believe in this, one family, one voice, one focus. And I believe if you've got that in the building and you've got people working every day to be successful, then you've got a chance to be successful and win. And I think that's really important. Commitment, obviously everybody knows what commitment is. And then accountability, everybody's got to be accountable. Um, we'll, we'll have a saying in, in our building, and I'm one of these, I don't put up a lot of signs, okay? I don't put up a lot of signs, but there'll be, there'll be one uh, uh, in that building, and it'll talk about strength of the unit. Um, anybody here got a military background? No, military, the military is the most unbelievable organization. The military uh, units, the, the, the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, the most unbelievable because it's about strength of the unit. There are nine units in football. There are nine units. And nine units have to be working in unison to have success to win games. Nine units have to have everybody in each individual unit be successful. That means from the last walk on, okay, to the number one guy in that unit. And everybody's gotta have everybody's back in that unit. And I use the term, everybody's gotta have everybody's six. And it's really important that that happens. We'll have nine assistant football coaches. I, I don't call them assistant football coaches. I call them unit leaders, just like they do in the military. Because I think it's really important that every one of our assistants knows every single thing about our football players in their unit. They know every single girlfriend. Uh, I mean, the, the whole nine yards know everything. When is he taking math 302? What, what's the time schedule? Uh, I, I want our assistant coaches to know that, so I think that's important. Uh, so strength of the unit will be big for us. Uh, core values, uh, I, I really believe every organization, whether it's IBM, whether it's uh, uh, Meritrade, whatever it is, has to have core values. Here's our core values, and again, when, they're, when the core values in our program are, are, are not handled in a correct way, I deal with them as a head coach, because uh, I think it's really important. Honesty. Okay, enough said, honesty, tell the truth. Treat women with respect. We all know what today's society is like when that doesn't happen, okay? I had a mom, my mom's deceased. Uh, my mom taught me a long time ago, don't ever treat a woman disrespectful. And I won't have, I won't have a football team that'll do that. Uh, no drugs. Thank you. <laughs> no drugs. No stealing, no weapons. Those are, the those are the five core values. And I believe if, you'll, if you can live by those five core values, you've got a chance to be successful. 
you got a chance to live a good life. If you just live by those five core values, I don't think there's much to it. I know a guy down the road in, in Austin that uses those same core values. <laughs> I mean, I know he does, uh, and I know where they came from. Uh, so uh, I think it's, I think, and I think they're true. Uh, I think it, it's, it's really important. So uh, I'm excited to be here. I, I will promise you this uh, as the head coach at, uh, at Texas State, uh, I will put together a staff uh, that will fly around with their hair, their hair on fire. I, I think it's really important. Uh, it, I think it's important to have mentors. Uh, I have to be the lead mentor in that, in that building over there. But we have to have mentors in every aspect of our kids' lives. And not just mentors as football coaches, okay, and, football, and, and teaching them how to be football players, but they need to be mentors in how they live their lives on campus and in the community. I think it's really important. So we're gonna grow our young people. When we talk about development, we talk about development as a student, as a person in society, and not lastly, but on that football field. Because I think it all works together. I think it all works together. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Um, it's a long journey. Uh, I don't ask for patience. I, 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 you, know what, you know what FAN stands for? It stands for fanatic. And a fanatic wants something right now. I get it. <laughs> I understand it. I've, I've lived it. I, 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 I do. I understand it. So we're going to work really, really hard uh, starting today as a, as a uh, football staff uh, as I put together a football staff to uh, make you guys proud uh, and make you guys really, really excited about being part of Bobcat Nation. Um, again, thank you guys. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I guess I'm going to open it up for questions. Okay. Uh, okay. Hi, Coach. You, you, you put in your time. What was the attraction to, to come into this place at this time uh, for me, you as a head coach? Me, come on. <laughs> uh, I, I think one of the things that really attracted me uh, to this job was uh, what Coach Fran had done here and uh, taking this program and, and, <laughs> and really taking this program from an FBS program to where it is now. And, and that's, that's a hard thing to do. I mean, people don't realize it. That's a really hard thing to do. And for him to do it and have the success that he had, it really made it attractive to me. Uh, and then, obviously, when, when I was called about the job, uh, I, I demanded one thing right off the bat. And I, I demanded a phone call from, from Larry. And I said, tell me why me? And, and that, that was the phone call. We had a, about a 45-minute conversation. And uh, in that conversation, I hung up the phone. And I said, I want that job. Uh, and because I talked to him. And then when I got in the room with the committee and Dr. Trout and, and uh, Dr. Smith and, and, and the people in that room, it was a no-brainer for me. It was a no-brainer. And uh, I'm excited. I, you know, people say, well, you know, I, I've heard this term, but it's a gold mine. It's a gold mine. People know about this place. This place is in a hidden gym. People know. People know. Mac Brown said it. I, I mean, he had a ton of coaches calling wanting to be assistants here. Not just because of me, but because of this place. And I think that's what's important to know. Coach, do you sense the, uh, the pivotal time right now for this program as grown up into FBS level? And how much does that fuel you as you take the job? Well, it fuels me. It, it fuels me a lot. Uh, I think it's important to uh, to know where we are uh, in the Sun Belt. I, I I heard I heard one statement uh, a lot in that interview, and it came from our president. It said, "I want to win the Sun Belt." <laughs> and uh, I think I looked back at her and I said, "I want to win it too." And uh, and, and, and I know we're at a pivotal, pivotal time in, in the program. Uh, you know, several years at FBS level, uh, putting together recruiting classes is going to be important. Uh, being able to hold on to the kids that we have committed now and move forward is going to be really important. 
Uh, but I think this program, you know, when you look at facilities, you look at where it is in, in the state, uh, um, I, I, think it's, I think it's right at a, at a time where we can take it up a notch. Uh, but we've got to start now, and uh, we've got to uh, go to work really fast. Sorry about the delay. Uh, you know, you've been in Texas, but it's such a hotbed for recruiting. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about your connections to the high school yeah. programs in the state. Well, uh, Larry mentioned about uh, uh, Mr. Rutledge and, and my time here uh, in Texas back in 1998 through 2000. Uh, I had a chance to be around a bunch of really good high school football coaches. And uh, I believe the best coaches in the country work in the state of Texas. The best high school football coaches. Uh, I've I've have been at the uh, I've been a, a speaker at the Angelo Clinic twice, uh, and that's been the most terrifying time of my life to stand up there on that stage and be talking to high school coaches that I said those guys probably know more than me, you know. And I'm at the University of Texas and I'm at you know Ohio State whatever, and I'm going those guys are really sharp. So. Uh, I think it's really important. My connections in the state uh, run deep. Uh, uh, I was, I think I told a committee in, in 1998, uh, Mac Brown's first recruiting class, we signed 18 kids. I had my hand in on six of them. Uh, and uh, all the way down to Texas City up to uh, Longview, Texas. Uh, I was on the road an awful lot, and, and uh, um, but it wreaked the benefits of kind of what started the foundation of Texas in the 2000s. Uh, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. Uh, I told Larry and, and the committee, I was not born here, but I was dipped. Uh, <laughs> I was dipped in Texas, so I get it. Uh, so I'm excited about uh, getting around and, and uh, getting to meet and getting to see some of the high school coaches. And one of the things that I've always felt comfortable with in, in, in the state of Texas is, is sitting down and talking football with the high school coaches here. It's just, it's unbelievable. And uh, it, uh, it, it brings back a level of excitement for me that I haven't had in a while. Uh, when it comes to visiting with high school coaches, I'm excited. Uh, Coach Larry mentioned that he needed a search committee to find you, that you're on nobody's radar. Did, did it feel that way to you, that you were kind of off the radar? And I'm wondering if you could talk about going back to, to a lower uh, level of football to be a head yeah. coach. Well, I, I'll go back. And I told this to the committee when I, when I uh, interviewed the other day. Uh, when I was at North Carolina in, two, in uh, I think, 2010, 2009, I got a phone call from Urban Meyer. Uh, Charlie Strong had just left Florida to go to Louisville as the head football coach. And Urban, uh, talk, we talked about me coming to be the defense coordinator at Florida. Uh, didn't work out. Uh, I stayed at North Carolina. Obviously, I was the interim head coach. Uh, Urban was out of football uh, the year. Uh, I was the interim head coach. He did it one of our games. He did our Clemson game um, when I was at North Carolina. We got a chance to spend some time together on the phone and, and really after the game. And uh, he told me at that time, he said, you're gonna, he said, I'm going to take the job at Ohio State. He said, I want you to come and be the assistant head coach, defense coordinator, co-defense coordinator. He said, you're going to stay here two years, and then you're going to get your head coaching job. I said, OK. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, it, you know, the plan kind of worked. Now. Obviously, you go, well, why do you go down to FCS? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have ever been to James Madison. Uh, it's a pretty neat place. Uh, it's a pretty good job. Um, it, it's one of those places that, you know, when, when the time's right, it'll be up at this level pretty quick. And it's one of the reasons I, I, I went, because I thought I could be what Fran, Coach Fran did here to JMU. Um, so. Uh, I, you know, going back and doing that to be a head coach, it, it was I on nobody's, uh, on, on other people's radar. I, I've been on a lot of radars. I've been in a lot of committee interviews. I've been in a bunch. Um, and this one just felt right. This one was the right fit. Coach, have you seen any more of a more beautiful campus in all your travels in <laughs> Texas State? And my other question is, which one of our future opponents puts butterflies in your stomach? <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't seen a more beautiful campus. Uh, I, I can't wait to go get, uh, you know, they tell me they're out there on that river right now. I'm kind of anxious <laughs> to get out there. I, I wish I could kind of get out there with them right now. But uh, no, this is a beautiful campus. When I, when I was in Austin, we used to travel down here all the time just to, 
you know, be around campus. It was such a beautiful campus. Um, future opponents, uh, you know, the only opponent we have is the one in the mirror. And uh, that's the only opponent we have. And that's how I treat it. I, you know, we're going to train to a level as a football team is whenever we walk out, I don't know if you have smoke or whatever out there. <laughs> when we walk through the smoke and we look across the field, the, the expectation is we're going to win the game. And the, and the only way you do that, The, the only way you do that is to train at a competitive level. And that's every day and competing every day as a football program. And that's coaches competing, that's players competing, that's everything. So again, I don't ever look at who we play very much, who's on the schedule. You know, obviously you, you get to that, but we don't even, during game week, we never talk about our opponent. We talk about us. We talk about how good we can be. If we're at our competitive best, then we're going to have a chance to win. And that's all we worry about. Coach, one more for you. Um, talk about your staff a little bit, who you have in mind to bring here, who you have in mind to keep that's already here, or what you have in mind. Well, I'm, I'm a little early in that process right now. Uh, I know there's a couple guys on our, on our staff that I'm – uh, really interested in. I, I will tell you guys this, and I told the search committee this, in the last two years at James Madison, I've lost four offensive coordinators to, uh, uh, to FBS schools. Um, so I must be hiring the right guys. Uh, I've had two go be FBS coordinators, uh, really three go FBS coordinators, and one go to a uh, Power 5 school as a position coach uh, in the last two years. And uh, so uh, I think you do your due diligence. Uh, I'm going to take my time. I want to make sure I get the right fit. I think what's important is this, is getting coaches in here that are going to follow the plan. Uh, we've got a plan, and, uh, and it's a plan to win. And uh, the coaches have to fit that. Uh, again, I, I'm into guys that are very energetic. Here's what you'll find out. I want our kids to be able to walk into that beautiful complex over there. That's one of the best looking complexes in college football. Okay? I want them to walk into that building and not have to worry about going to see their position coach if they got a problem. That they can stop at any coach's office and sit down and get a problem fixed. So that's what I'm looking for as a, as a head coach when I hire assistants. That they can, they are involved in every kid, not just their, their position group, every kid. Uh, working hard every single day uh, where you guys are involved uh, we'll have a lot of frank conversations uh, I'm into honesty and I'm into uh, uh, you know he, well, I have a saying act like a man be treated like a man and uh, that's one of the things that we do every day we talk about you know acting like men every day and to me I think that's really important but trust has to be earned Trust has to be earned on both ends. It has to be earned. And that's going to be really, really important for me. Uh, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I see a bunch of you guys. You look good, man. Uh, I saw a bunch of you out there. I, 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 saw, I saw a bunch of you out there running around today. You must have knew there was a press conference today. Uh, they were out there working out today. It must have been a press conference going on. So, uh, so I get it. I understand it. Uh, no, I, I, I really take that serious. Um, that, that, that first 30 days is really important for me. Really, really important for me. And uh, it, you don't get it in 30 days, but you start it in 30 days. And uh, uh, I've seen it work. I, here's what I tell everybody, and it's, it's kind of arrogant, but I tell everybody, I've got a plan and it's infallible. Have to, have to get them here. Um, I was, uh, I was last night. 
I don't know, me and my wife, we were sitting around, I think, I said, I want to have the, the best student appreciation day this spring in college football. And I want to have it where we have it out there doing spring practice on a Saturday scrimmage where we've got over 12,000 students out there on that field. Not in the stands. I don't care about you being sitting in the stands. You're going to be on the field. And if you want to come out and be the running back in practice, you get a chance to go out and be the running back in practice. <laughs> If you want to be the quarterback in practice, you can be the quarterback in practice. So my goal is to have the biggest and most elaborate student appreciation day for spring practice in college football history. Can that happen? I don't, you know, we're going to shoot for it. <laughs> we're, we're going to shoot for it. Uh, here, here's what I believe about, I, th I think there has to be some inclusion. Uh, I think our, our student athletes and our students on campus have to be intertwined. Everybody's got to be together. They've got to know our, our football players, not just out here with helmets and shoulder pads on. Okay? They've got to know them. They, you sit with them in class, but you don't know them. How do you get them engaged in one another? I think that's really important. Uh, I ride my bike on campus. I eat in the dorm. I eat in the, the dining halls. Uh, our coaches will, will be on campus, and they'll eat in the dining halls. Why? Because we want to engage with the student body. Uh, I think it's really important that that happens. And it can't be we work in that building and we never come on campus. We have to be on campus. And our players have to be known on campus. Not just, not just as football players, but as good students on campus and good people. So that's important to me. So uh, that's, that's really job one. As a, as a head football coach and a CEO, how do you get the fan base and the, student, the students on your campus engaged? It's a dead period. <laughs> it's a dead period. So uh, we can't actually be, you know, involved in, in much of that. But uh, there'll be guys that we know about. Um, you know, here's what I'll tell you. In, in recruiting for 2016, if you don't have them identified by now, you're late. Uh, at James Madison, we had, we, have seven, we had 17 commitments. And we had four for 2017. So, uh, and last year we had the number one recruiting class in FCS, and they will have the number one recruiting class this year in FCS. So, uh, uh, we're going to hit the ground running. We're going to do it right, though. We're going to do it right. I know in this room we have a lot of people about that thing. Yeah. You don't have to show them the children here. Right. They don't have a. Right. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you guys. I'm ready to get started. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great day. Uh, I think I'm going to do this right, I believe. What is it? Is it right here? Uh, eat him up, eat him up, Bobcats. Go, Bobcats, go. All right? Uh, I'm excited. I, you know what? I, I almost screwed it up earlier because I, you know, I was up the road a little bit. So <laughs> I'm not going to screw it up. I'm going to get it right. Thank you guys for having me.